Hello guys and welcome to the channel. My name's Danny, this is Crafty D Sculpting and in this week's video we're doing my most ambitious sculpt to date. We're doing the Great Unclean one from Forge World. Now if you watched any of my videos in the past that you know that I try and keep things simple-ish but now we're going a little bit off scale on this one. This is the most ambitious one as I said. He's a big old boy, big thick boy this one. Used a hell of a lot of clay, the most expensive sculpt I've done and i've probably used around about five and a half six pound of clay on this one and because he's so big we've had to cut this video into two parts so welcome to part one where we're going to be doing the actual sculpt itself in the second part we're going to be doing the base and getting around to painting him so if you haven't already now's a great time to like and subscribe the video because if you don't want to miss the second part of this video hit that notification bell as well for us but let's get straight into the video see you in a minute Welcome back guys, right we're starting with the armature on this one and with this one it's not going to be a typical armature wire, we are going straight in with a tin foil. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a whole roll of tin foil for this one, well basically a whole roll but we're going to start winding it up and squishing it all together and just keep building up and building up and building up until we've got a nice big piece of tin foil that we're going to then wrap in clay but as you can see here we're just continuously building up the layers of tin foil to get what we like until we get something like this there we go right now we are going to be starting off with super sculpey and there we go some of it's been preconditioned and then we've rolled it out flat in the pasta maker and then we can start wrapping it around the uh, tin foil now we're just going to loosely just put in this around before putting it in the oven just so we've got something to work off of. As you can see we're just haphazardly just putting this on, just smoothing it all in until we've got this. There we go, just winding out all the creases, put him in the oven, he comes out rock hard like that. There we go, right now we've got that done, we're going to move on to some liquid clay going to open up our liquid clay, pour it all over and then get it all brushed in. Alright, this is going to actually help the next layer of clay actually stick once it gets baked. But we're just going to continue doing what we've done last time, we're just going to wrap it around first of all and then start building up layers. Now, we lost a little bit of footage due to a corrupted memory card, I have to get myself a new one I think. But as you can see we're just building up the layers, building up the layers, getting the general shape until we're left with a big old thick boy like this. Now once we've got him done like that, I'm just going to now remove the lump of clay that I put on for where his head's going to be and part of his stomach which will become clear later. As he's got half of his guts all hanging out on this one so we're just scooping out some of the clay to make room for that later on because we're going to rebake him again. There we go, just scooping out a bit more before he goes in and now he's all hardened but as you can see because we've used so much clay he's developed a few cracks. But don't worry about that, that's all going to get taken care of very soon. But for now, we're going to drill out some holes for where his legs are going to be. Now this one, his belly's touching the floor and he's got his legs all bent into shape. So we're going to get some of our armature wire. Going to cut off the desired amount. Get that into place. And then shape accordingly. Right, now we know roughly how his legs are going to be positioned. We can cut off any excess. There we go, that's cut off. And now we're going to get the tin foil back out, start wrapping around just to bulk it up a little bit and give something for the clay to actually grip onto. Once we've got that on we can stick that leg back in place, get out the super sculpey and start building up the layers of clay. And again we use quite a bit of clay because as I said he is a bit of a thick boy this one. We use about five and a half, six pound of clay on this one. I mean. <laughs> You're looking at 20 quid a block of clay, so yeah, this worked out pretty expensive, this one. So there we go, just building up them layers still. Getting the shape that we want, and we'll refine it off a of camera a bit later on. But for now, we're just going to carry on building them layers up. Yeah, 
here we go just smoothing it all into place but there's the general look of what he's going to look like we do add a bit more clay later on and add him a foot but now we're going to move on to the stomach now as i said earlier all of his guts are off hanging out on this one so we're just going to be getting some well i basically use cos clay for this part because it's really really thin pit bits of clay that could easily break so we use the cos clay because that would give a little bit more flexibility but as you can see we're just getting in intestines put in place just haphazardly putting them in doesn't have to look too brilliant but now we're going to use this tool to start opening up as you can see some of the wounds that we've already put in him but this is how I do it just literally open them up putting in little tiny balls of clay to represent little welts and warts and pus boils and whatever disgusting other things he's got on his body but there we go just adding in a few more of them and all I'm doing is just putting little balls of clay in and then just smoothing them all down and giving it little scratches across the surface just to represent these battle wounds and his great uncleanness right now we can move on to his feet now we just put a shape of clay in just shaping it out to the best we can to a foot shape before opening up the toes and then using this small spoon tool just to find the shape once we've got that generic shape down, we can use one of our silicon tools to get the toenails in place. And then just scratching any details that we see that we need. Right, as you can see, I've done the second leg off a of camera. Slightly different pose on that one. But again, we're just opening up more battle wounds that he's got on him. And adding more warts and pus boils and all them disgusting lovelies there we go coming together nicely right now we've done that we can move on to the upper part of the body now we're moving on to the arms and we're doing exactly the same thing with the armature wire we've drilled some holes cut some armature wire to shape and not to size should I say and then we're going to shape them as we need before getting the tin foil back out again and bulking up the arms couple of layers of tin foil on this should do there we go nice big arms going in and back out with a super sculpey start bulking them up exactly the same as what we did with the legs smoothing it all in as, as needed and again we can refine it off a camera later but we're just giving you the general idea of what we're doing I mean, this one took me well over a week to make but now we're moving on to the hands following the same sort of style that we did with the feet we're just going to cut the fingers into place before opening it all up and then twisting and pulling and turning with our fingers to get the finger shapes that we need and then we can move on to different various spoon tools and other other tools just to help find that shape once we've done that we can snip a little bit off of the armature wire and get that hand onto place before smushing it all into place like that. And again, we do add some more clay later on. Bulk up his arms just that little bit more and to where the wrist meets the, uh, the, the forearm. Right, now we're using a bit of cos clay here for some of the wounds um, because he's got some flappy parts of skin. So again, we don't want them breaking off too easy, so we're using our more flexible clay for that part. Yeah, because as you see, I can get all this done in a 20 minute video or however long this video may be. But yeah, in reality, this actually does take quite a while to do. So again, uh, if you're interested in maybe me doing a Patreon, then let us know in the comments below and then I can do more detailed and slowed down videos because as I say I have to time lapse these quite a lot right now we are moving on to his back now he has an exposed spine so we're opening up the area removing some of the clay and shaping as required 
there we go we're getting all the flaps of skin just as we need all cut up and everything else before we can make the actual spine itself now i've just got a sausage of clay cutting that to shape before we get our silicon tools out and we can start marking out where all the vertebrae are going to be so we're just pushing in as desired before moving on to different silicon tools to get all the detail into place. Now don't forget guys, I will put a link down below, but we have a video out at the moment and I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers. Once I get to 500 subscribers, I will be giving one of my models away, but the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you go onto the video and click on there and just go onto the comments and write done hit subscribe hit like and you'll be in a chance of winning that one all right now we've got the spine done we're just gonna make it look a bit more realistic on the inside of uh, an opened up flesh wound and making all like the muscles and everything else so all we're gonna do with that is just use various tools and stab and poke and prod until we've got that desired look. Doesn't have to be too pretty. As I say, it is a wound. But there you go, as you can see we're scratching up the surface, making it all itty bitty. Right, now we are moving on to his back now. With this one, he's got all these boils that are underneath the skin. So we're putting on these balls of clay and then we're just gonna get a thin layer of cos clay and lay that over the top. So it actually looks like the boils are coming up underneath the actual skin itself. Now we are adding this, it's not a necklace, it's a big flabby bit of skin that is going to be around his neck. Before we can get his head in. Now all I've done is used a big ball of clay for this one. And we're just going to be taking off bits that we don't need, shaping it with our fingers. Took me a few attempts this one ripped his head off a couple of times and had to redo it now we're marking out his eyes before cutting open where his mouth's going to be and taking off any excess that we don't need and adding bits and pieces on where we do need there we go just removing some for the inside of his mouth adding back bits that we over overtook some of it off that we didn't need to take off but as I say it's a progress trust in the progress right now I have this little heat gun which I use in a little ceramic dish or any uh, bits that need pre-baking that I don't really want to put in the oven it's quite easy to put in that dish as it warms up and holds the heat but as you can see now they've been baked I can get his eyes into place just give them a little push in. Now we can work on the teeth. Get the teeth all in place. Just literally pushing them into his gums. Again, don't have to be too perfect with this. Now that's done. We can get this little worm of clay. Put it around his eye and start giving him some eyelids. Cool, right now that's done, we'll give him some eyebrows. Just smushing it all in, shaping it with various different tools again. So we get that desired look. Right now he's got a series of horns, so we're just going to push in a bit of a hole in his head before getting this horn and putting it in place. And then we're going to add a little ring of clay around that is going to be sort of like the bit of skin that you usually find that encompasses around the uh, the horn itself on, on most animals. Once we've got that in place, we can get a small spoon tool 
and start squishing in the clay. Perfect. Right, now with that he's got two more horns coming out the side of his head so we're just going to push this bit of armature wire through his head. He's got one full horn and one broken horn so obviously we make one side slightly bigger than the other. We're going to be using Cosclair again for this part and just adding on bits and pieces as we need. Coming back to the small spoon tool just to get everything blended in and get everything shaped. Now for the underside. Again, you're getting that little bit of skin that goes around the, uh, the base of the horn and just following the same process that we've done on the top. Using various different tools just to get it all smoothed over before we move on to his blade. Now, it took me a, again, it took me a while to think about how I was going to do this, but this is how I end up doing it. And again, this is done out of cos clay because we want that flexibility and we don't want to risk breaking it. So now we've got the metal in place, the armature wire, shall I say. We're just going to use two thin bits of clay just to bulk out the edges. Just so you don't see the armature wire coming through the actual clay itself. And we're going to smush down where the actual cutting part of the blade is. And then we can just start shaping it as desired. Getting the hilt in place. Adding bits and pieces where they're needed. And smushing them all in. Right now we've done that, we can figure out whereabouts it's going to go on his other arm. We're going to bend the extended bit of armature wire over. We're going to cut off the excess. Put the blade in place and then trap it with the uh, grips. There we go. That's all trapped in place before adding a big ball of clay to work in through his other hand. Now obviously this hand's a lot easier to do because you don't really see his fingers because they're on the underside. But yet yeah, we shape it as we need. Different silicon tools again. Right now he's got a massive open wound, but this is how we do this one, slightly different to what you've seen on the others. We're just going to literally scratch open the area of where the actual wound is, before using various different ball styluses just to smush and prod and poke until we get this desired look. What do you think guys? Leave a comment down below, let us know what you think of this one and what you want to see me do next. Whether you want, us, want me to stay within the fantasy world of Ford World and 40k or whether you've got some other ideas. Yeah, we're just finishing off giving some more cuts and bruises and open wounds. And again, he's got another few wounds up on his arm. So we're just going to get him cut into place. Before finally getting his tongue into place. Now he's got a big old tongue on this one, which wraps around the blade. So we're just going to get that in and get that all smushed in into his mouth. Before shaping and wrapping that around. Alright, get your head out of the way then. You've got a bit of doing that. I really need to sort out my camera angles. But we're coming to the end of this one now guys, and in the next video we're going to be showing you the base. So we're going to use these little figures and we're going to get all them worked into the base. But anyway, for now, thanks for watching, hope to see you soon, don't forget to like and subscribe, 
and hit that notification bell if you want to see the final product. To be continued. Thanks again, guys.